Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budget, standard or modern decks, and this week we're taking a look at a blue-red historic deck in standard, built around the historic theme. So we've got four copies of Jora Weatherlight Captain, a 4-mana 3-3 legendary creature that says whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card, and historic spells include artifacts, legendaries, so both creatures and planeswalkers, sagas, those are all historic, so they will all draw us a card when we cast them with a Jora in play, and we've got plenty of other historic synergies in the deck, so let's dive right into it here, starting out with our one drops, where we have four copies of Renegade Map, which functions as kind of a land that's also a historic card, so when we play it with a Jora in play, for example, we'll get to draw a card, so that's why we have four copies of Renegade Map in the deck and a slightly lower land count. We also have three copies of Artificer's Assistant, a 1-mana one 1-1 one flyer that says whenever you cast a historic spell you get to scry one, so that gives us a nice little bit of card selection, make sure we find the right cards at the right time. Then we also have two copies of Magma Spray as a cheap removal spell that also exiles the creature that it kills, so very good against cards like Earthshaker Kenra and Scrap Heap Scrounger. Then we get to some 2-mana artifacts, which of course are also historic cards. So we've got two copies of Azor's Gateway, which we can pay a mana, tap it to draw a card and then exile a card from our hand, so it gives us a nice little bit of card selection. And if we've exiled five cards with varying converted mana costs from our hand, we get to transform Azor's Gateway into Sanctum of the Sun and gain a bit of life, and then Sanctum of the Sun taps for mana equal to our life total, so it can add a lot of mana to our mana pool all of a sudden. And we also have two copies of Treasure Map, which lets us scry one if we tap it for one mana, and then eventually transforms into Treasure Cove, which also lets us draw cards if we sacrifice treasure tokens that we get when we transform it. Then we also have four copies of Voltaic Servant, which is a 2-mana 1-3 that says at the beginning of your end step, untap target artifact, which synergizes very nicely with the Azor's Gateway and Treasure Map, since those are both artifacts that you can use multiple times if you get to untap them with the Voltaic Servant, so you might be able to transform Azor's Gateway or Treasure Map a lot sooner than you would normally. And Voltaic Servant also combos very nicely with Traxos, which we will get to in just a second. Then we also have four copies of a Braid as another interactive spell that can deal three damage to a creature or destroy an artifact. And then three copies of Pianalar in the three drop slot, which is also a historic card as a legendary creature. Three mana for a 2-2 two -two, that when she enters the battlefield we get a 1-1 one -one flying Thopter creature token. And she also has varying abilities, giving artifacts plus one plus so until end of turn, or sacrificing an artifact so a creature can't block. All very useful abilities in this deck. And then we get to Traxos, Scourge of Krug, a 4-mana 7-7 seven, seven artifact creature that's also legendary with Trample, so it's not going to get chum blocked. And Traxos has a drawback, since when he enters a battlefield, he enters tapped, and he doesn't untap during your untap step, but whenever you cast a historic spell, you get to untap Traxos. So the obvious combo here is just with Voltaic Servant, since if you have Voltaic Servant in play, you just get to untap Traxos at the end of every turn, so you don't even have to play Historic Spells, but in our deck full of Historic Spells, it's not that difficult to untap Traxos every turn. Then we also have two copies of the Weatherlight, a 4-mana four 4-5 four vehicle with flying. Crew cost is 3, so we have to tap a total of 3 power to crew the Weatherlight so it can attack and block. So it's not the easiest card to crew in our deck, but we do have Joyra, PNLR. Those are the best cards at uh, crewing the Weatherlight, or if you have multiple small creatures, those also work. But the payoff is certainly there, since if the Weatherlight deals combat damage to a player, you get to look at the top 5 cards of your library, reveal a historic card and put it into your hand. So a great way to gain card advantage. And speaking of card advantage, we have the full 4 copies of Joyra Weatherlight Captain, which draws us a ton of cards with basically every card we play in our deck, except for maybe one or two removal spells. Then we also have one copy of Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, another vehicle, 5 mana for a 6-5 flyer, that when it enters a battlefield or attacks, it deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls, and the crew cost is also 3. Then we have two copies of Karn's Temporal Sundering, a 6 mana legendary sorcery, which means we can only cast it if we control a legendary creature or planeswalker, but if we do get to cast Karn's Temporal Sundering, it's very powerful since we get to take an additional turn and also return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then we have to exile Karn's Temporal Sundering. 
So very powerful effect. And a small side note about legendary sorceries. We do have these legendary vehicles in our deck, which by themselves don't necessarily let us cast the legendary sorcery. But if we can somehow crew the Sky Sovereign or Weatherlight, let's say we have a bunch of Voltaic Servants or Artificer's Assistants, or maybe a Thopter token from PNLR while PNLR is already dead, we can still manage to crew the Weatherlight or Sky Sovereign somehow, then they do count as legendary creatures for the Karn's Temporal Sundering. And then, last but not least, we also have two copies of Zahid, Jinn of the Lamp, a 6 mana 5 6 with flying, but we can also pay 4 mana and tap an untapped artifact we control rather than pay its mana cost. So, very easy to just play this on turn 4 by tapping one of our cheap artifacts. Then, our mana base is pretty straightforward. We have 5 islands, 5 mountains, 4 Spire Bluff Canal, which enters Battlefield untapped if it's one of our first 3 lands. 4 Sulphur Falls, which enters the battlefield untapped if we control a mountain or an island, and then 4 Zelfer and Void, which also enters the battlefield untapped and lets us scry 1 when it enters the battlefield, so it gives us a nice little bit of card selection. Since the mana requirements in the deck are not very steep, we don't have a ton of double blue or double red cards in the deck, so we can afford to play the colorless land, since we also have a renegade map to fix our mana. Then going over the sideboard, we have three copies of Chandra's Defeat against all the red decks, great at killing Chandra's after sideboard. Two copies of Magma Spray as another cheap removal spell, so we can go up to four against the aggressive decks. Two Crook of Condemnation against the graveyard decks. Two Jace's Defeat, which is a nice counter spell against the blue decks that can also counter Torrential Gearhulk. Two Sorcerer Spyglass, which is versatile against Planeswalkers, Gate to the Afterlife and some other stuff. And then three Negates against the control decks to counter non-creature spells, and then one Fight with Fire as an additional removal spell that can also deal with Lyra Dawnbringer. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and this looks like a keeper. Four lands is on the high side, but we have the Assistant and the Gateway to ensure that we don't flood out. Alright, let's go Spire Bluff into Assistance. Hope they don't have a Fatal Push. No Fatal Push, that's good. And they turn to Bloodfast, alright. So we'll have to try and deal some damage to our opponents so they don't get to draw too many cards. Let's go second Spire Bluff into Gateway. Scry with the assistance. And probably don't need a Magma Spray. Get in for one. Next turn we can play Renegade Map. Activate Gateway, Scry with the Void. So we'll get to do some stuff. And Doomfall. It's probably going to take our Joyra here. Well, that works. Probably want to start by using the gateway. Weather light's not bad. And get rid of a land. And then we'll scry with the void. Since I kind of want to keep the renegade map until after we play Joyra, so we can draw a card right away. So scry with the void. Bottom land and then attack for one. I guess we could just go turn four Joyra, turn five Weatherlight plus Renegade map, which has the highest payoff. Yeah, we'll we'll see next turn. I'm not sure yet if we're gonna play Weatherlight first or Joyra first, since playing Weatherlight and then being able to crew it to turn after is also pretty spicy. Right, Gonti is not gonna block our Weatherlight, luckily. Hopefully doesn't find one of our abrades. <laughs> right, we're now uh, suddenly Jora flooded. I think I still like playing Waterlight here. So let's attack for one with the assistance. There's just uh, more removal spells our opponent can have that interact favorably if we play Jora as opposed to if we play Waterlight. So I'll keep the land on top here in the hopes of being able to play Jora and Renegade Map next turn and get a card out of it right away. Opponent might just be keeping up Avraska's Contempt here to kill the Waterlight. Yep. Well, we're just gonna play Joyra. Scry with the assistance. Voltaic Servant is a historic spell, so you probably just want to keep all historic spells on top. And it also works nicely with our gateway. Play a Renegade map, draw a card, Scry. We'll draw the card first and then scry with the assistance since we know we want to draw the servant. And don't need another gateway. And then 
I guess her opponent only has two cards in hand, so there's a small chance they don't have a Vraska's Contempt. Sell crew. And get in there. Alright, we got a hidden with the weather light, that's a good sign. And we find more weather lights and more Joras. Um, I guess we want second weather light over third Joira. Say go. And Pons is gonna use Bloodfast twice end of turn. That's fine. So they're down to eights. And we've got a pretty good board going. What is this? Six mana. For a walking ballista for three. That's fine. It's gonna just shoot down Jora. But we have a backup. So next turn is gonna be pretty sweet. We get to play Jora. Sag the Renegade map, play a Servant. I guess we want to sag the Renegade map first, since we get to scry with the Servant, or with the Assistant rather, so we don't want to shuffle away or scry decisions. So I guess we picked up an island, so maybe that's not necessary, since we did scry some cards to the bottom that we don't necessarily want to draw. Alright, so let's play land, play Joyra. Scry with the assistance, bottom renegade map, play Voltaic Servants, and draw with Joyra. I guess now we could have scryed first before drawing, but it worked out. And yeah, we'll take a Sky Sovereign. So we can draw that with the crude weather light. Alright, things are going well. So we'll find Sky Sovereign. I guess Temporal Sundering also works, but yeah, I'll take Sky Sovereign. Say go. And then untap Weatherlight, I guess. Doesn't really matter. And let's see if our opponent gets out of this. Still haven't seen what they got with the Gonti. Could just be something like a Traxos that they can't even untap. Yep. <laughs> Let's see if they have... I guess they can sacrifice it with the temple. So that's kind of a combo. And they even have the blood fast to untap it. Alright, fair enough. So yeah, they can gain 7 life here. So they're definitely not dead. We can play Sky Sovereign, kill Gonti. And then I guess we can force the issue on the Abrade. So sure, let's sack Renegade map. Get an island. Destroy Traxos. Bone is gonna sack it, gain 7 up to 10. And now we get to play Sky Sovereign. I'll scry before drawing. Pia's good. Deal 3 to Gonti. And then we get to Crew. And get in for 6. Take another look with the weather light, find another Pia. And end of turn, untap Voltaic Servants. Alright, so... Bones at 4. We've got multiple vehicles, multiple creatures that can crew those vehicles. So don't mind our position. And never on Jora. And a Gifted Aetherborn, that's not gonna do it. Alright, let's draw. Run out Pia. And then crew Sky Sovereign. And then we can do this multiple ways. I guess we can... Alright, opponent's gonna save us some time and scoop it up. Alright, on to game 2 against Mono Black. Didn't see a ton that I want to sideboard in necessarily. Magma Spray seems kind of bad. And maybe we want a Sorcerer Spyglass to name Argyle's Bloodfast or Walking Ballista or something like that. I guess Negate could be okay. I'll bring in two Negates. And then maybe Shave and a Braid. Since there's not a ton of creatures we need to kill necessarily. Since we plan on winning in the air. I guess those Death Touch creatures are annoying against Traxos, but... So be it. I guess I'll, I'll bring in the braid over the negate anyways. Alright, this seems fine. This ends okay. Don't get to play assistant on turn one, but that's okay. 
Ooh, Jorah's a nice one. So I think we just go tapped Sulphur Falls, go, and the next one we get to go Zalfur Void if we want to, and then Assistant into Renegade map. Or we can keep the Renegade map until after we play Jorah. We'll see. Turn to Aetherborn, so glad we kept in all our braids. Uh, Gateway's an interesting one too. I guess our hand's clunky enough that we should probably not think too much about keeping cards in hand for Joyra. So I'm just gonna run out the assistance. And then... I guess we'll see. We'll scry with the Void. If we keep it on top, then there's no reason for us to play the Renegade map necessarily. Don't think we want a treasure map. Already have a gateway. Don't need more clunky cards. And then now I'll play the Renegade map. Scry again. I'll take another Void since we do need... I guess we have the Renegade map as land number 4. But I don't mind drawing a few extra lands and this is a pretty good one. Not in a bad spot here. We've got a nice curve going. Let's see if our opponent can disrupt that curve or present something powerful. Alright, there's a Bloodfast. They do have the Aetherborn this time around to offset their life loss. Alright, let's get in for one first, just in case. And then, it's actually interesting which land to play here. Could also sag the Renegade map right now before we start scrying. That might be reasonable. Alright, let's get an island. Play the island, play Pia. Scry with the assistants. And bottom the Sulphur Falls. Alright. So you go. Don't really want to trade Pia for the Aetherborn, but we'll see. Yeah, I think we just take two. And Doomfall is going to take our Joyra, most likely. Yep. And Temporal Sundering is not bad. So here we can just attack for four and play Atraxos. And the next turn untap it with the Gateway. Seems like a plan. I guess we're just looking for action in general. So I don't mind playing the Void here. Alright, Zahid is a good one. Keep that on top. Attack for 4, since we're not blocking. And then play a 7-7 seven, seven Trample. And keep Zahid on top. So next turn, we can just play Zahid if we want to, which also lets us untap Traxos. Contempt on Traxos, alright, fair enough. Gonti. Would have been pretty annoying there, taking our Zahid. So that's a scary part about scrying to the top against a deck with Conti. But I think we'll be okay. Yeah, we have to tap the Thopter token here in order to play Zahid. And we're looking for land here. Yep. So we can cast Temporal Sundering next turn. We have two Legendary, so even if they kill one of them, we're still okay. So we're at 14, but still at 20, thanks to the Aetherborn. But we have the better board state right now. The rest, alright, that's unfortunate. That's gonna take our Temporal Sundering. And a Walking Ballista for 2 can take out our 1 Toughness Creatures. Or can just stay at 1. Nope, they're just gonna trade off. Alright, opponents got 1 card, but they do still have that Bloodfast to refuel. But Sahid is going to hit pretty hard. And now keeping that land on top didn't pay off, but we can still loot it away with the gateway, so that's okay. And yep, yeah, treasure map's a good one. Attack for 7. A braid would be nice to answer the Aetherborn. Opponent uses Field of Ruin on the Sulphur Falls. Just to get more black mana, I suppose. Um, don't really need double red for anything. Double blue in case we need to hard cast a Zahid, I guess. I guess Pia maybe requires more red, so maybe should have gotten a mountain there. And then Doomfall will get rid of Pia. Put him back up to 17. Upkeep will scry with treasure map. Don't need a renegade map. We'll draw. Voltaic Servants, okay, not amazing. Does let us untap the treasure map and transform it next turn, so it's probably good enough. Let's see, if we use Gateway, then we can still play Voltaic Servant and use treasure map. And we might draw something better, so 
Let's uh, let's loot. Ooh, Traxos. That's a, a good one, but we don't have a way to untap it currently, and we can't play it this turn. And it's not amazing against the Aetherborn, so I'm actually tempted to get rid of Traxos here. Attack for five. Play Servants. Untap Treasure Map. And never on Zahid, that's annoying. So now we don't have any pressure in play, so we need to find kind of our snowball-y cards like the Weatherlight, Joyra, Sky Sovereign would be pretty good here. And of turn we'll scry with Treasure Map. Bottom the lands, upkeep scry again. Transform Treasure Map. Alright, a braid is probably good enough to keep here. And then attack for one. Could use a gateway still, in case we top deck something better. Sure. Alright, I guess that's an easy decision. And then we'll get rid of the Aetherborn right now. So you go. Alright, so it's the opponent's Bloodfast versus our Treasure Cove, essentially. So we can use Gateway again just to try and transform it, which might be okay, since the life boost could be relevant. Another never on the servant. Opponent can also start making zombies at some point. Alright, opponent's at 9. I guess I'll use a gateway here. Let's see what we exile. An assistant, so I'm happy with that. Draw. Temporal Sundering, which we can't cast. Let's draw with Treasure Cove first. Alright, Joyra is a good one. Definitely playing Joyra. Question is if we are going to use the gateway. I guess we can wait if they kill Joyra, we loot with gateway if not then we'll hang on to the temporal sundering all right opponent down to seven they will untap with four cards in hands so it's likely that they have an answer for jora the rest all right i guess we use gateway in response haha <laughs> it's pretty funny uh so let's see we've got a one a two a four and a zero so if we get rid of the six we get to transform gateway but I'm not sure that we want to transform gateway so that leads me to believe I just want to exile the spyglass to keep the gateway around I think that makes sense so they get to get rid of the temporal sundering and then doomfall gets rid of Joyra. all right back to square one better opponents down to five so they don't get to use the blood fast infinitely so let's draw Weatherlight's not bad. Let's draw with Treasure Cove first. And Pia's pretty good here as well. So now we'll just play the Weatherlight, I think. And next turn we can crew it with Pia. That way we dodge any sorcery speed removal. Bloodfast can transform if they want to. They keep it around. They can make a ton of black mana, so if they have a walking ballista we could be in trouble. And the rest is gonna miss. So glad we sequenced it this way. And Doomfall. Alright, I guess, uh, let's see, do we want to use a gateway? It would transform if we get rid of Pia, so I don't think we want to. We could find a land, I suppose, is the argument. But then our gateway will have transformed and we can no longer use it to loot. So I think we just let it happen. And the Eldest Reborn, alright. It's pretty good in a turn or two when they can get back something from the graveyard. Just need to make sure to empty our hand here so we don't have to discard to it. Draw with the treasure cove, I suppose. Use gateway. Alright. So we will actually end up discarding to the Eldest Reborn here, which is pretty funny. I guess we hang on to both lands since we can still loot one away with the gateway. Which just goes to show that not transforming the gateway can uh, definitely be important. This is not a deck where we're trying to abuse the Sanctum of the Sun. Alright, opponent could start making some zombie tokens if they remember the never to return. Yep. Gets rid of a renegade map. Makes a 2-2. They are in a precarious spot since they can't really afford to activate the blood fast, otherwise they die to the weatherlight. And if we just draw a P and LR, we could win on the spot if they don't have interaction since we can pump the weatherlight for one and deal five to them. So that's the card we're looking for the most, I think. Another return. Alright, opponent's got two zombies, we're at eight, so this is going to be a close one. We're out of treasures. And just a mountain to draw, so let's use gateway. Alright, we're flooding out a bit. 
Still gonna hang on to the lands, I think. They transform the blood fast, so they ensure that they can't die to a, a top decked Pia. Yep, there we go. And now they can get back something out of our graveyard, like Zahid, and that's probably gonna be game. So we had a few draw steps to win. Opponent had some timely doom falls, but we still have the third game to try and win the match. Let's loot with Gateway. Alright, looks like we drew 10 lands in a row here. So on to game 3. Do we want to change anything? Uh, we did already bring in one Spyglass for the Bloodfast. Still have all our braids for the Death Touch creatures. Negate seems okay, not amazing against all those duresses. Don't think duress is particularly great against us, but I guess it did lose to the Waterlight in game 1. Yeah, I think we just run it back. Fight with Fire paired with Azor's Gateway could also be a plan, but I don't think we need that. Would like to be on the play. The sand's keepable thanks to Renegade map. And we can even play the Assistant on one. I guess it's a bit risky if they duress away the Renegade map. But this isn't a super fast matchup, so we shouldn't get punished too badly if they do duress the Renegade map. Alright, no duress. Alright, let's play the Renegade map. I guess we should have maybe just played a Renegade map on one to ensure that we hit a second land drop. Since now we will miss a land drop for a turn. But this way we got a scrying. Alright, there's an Aetherborn. And probably want to sack Renegade map before scrying. Let's get an island. And then we have a few options. We can play another Assistant or we can just play Servant or Spyglass. Don't mind the double scry with the Assistant, but we do really want to find a third land for next turn. So I think I'll play the Spyglass. Since the Servant doesn't do a ton for us here. Renegade map is tempting, but I really just want to find lands. And uh, let's see here. Bloodfast, Doomfall, Another Aetherborn, Eldest Reborn, Contempt, Ballista, so they also kept the two lander. So we can name Ballista or we can name Bloodfast here. I think we'll go for the Bloodfast. And say go. So we know their hand. Next turn they're probably just playing another Aetherborn. Yep. So they did not find a land either. But those Aetherborns are pretty good on turn two. Come on, land. Alright, nice. So now we get to either play Pia or we can go Assistant into Voltaic Servant, ensure that we have land number 4 for Joyra, which then draws us extra cards since... Yeah, our opponent's only 3 mana removal is Doomfall, which is not gonna tag Joyra. So I kinda like that. So let's play Assistant. Play Voltaic Servant. And keep Sulphur Falls on top. Alright, so we've got a plan here. And that's to snowball card advantage with Joyra, while our opponent struggles to hit their land drops. And then hopefully we can find an answer to those Aetherborns at some point. So double blocking is not going to work here, so we'll take four. And opponent just passes, they don't even want to play Ballista on one, which is suspicious. We'll just be attacking and playing a Joyra. And then try and scry some historic spells to the top, like this Renegade map, that's perfect. Since it lets us play both Pia and Renegade map next turn and ensures we work our way up towards Karn's Temporal Sundering. Don't mind our position, opponent's stuck on two of course, helps. Alright, the rest is gonna take the Sundering, we'll take four. Alright, they're just attacking for two this time around. Let's play Pia. We'll do a scry, a draw, and then a scry. Bottom of the lands, draw. Weatherlight's a nice one. And then a braid is a good one to keep on top. And then play a renegade map and draw the braid. Draw before we scry. So draw a braid, scry twice. Bottom of the lands. And bottom the gateway, I think. Don't really need that at this point. And then attack for two in the air. Opponent could Doomfall us next turn, take a braid, but then we get to play the Weatherlight. 
If they take the weather light, we get to abrade, so we're in a good spot regardless. Also get to untap the Renegade map with the Voltaic Servant, not that it really matters. Alright, they did find land number three, so battle at the bridge for two on Pia, sure. Our most valuable card is Jora by far. Take two, down to ten. Alright, Zelfrin Void, that will work. I'll play the Void. Bottom the map. Play Weatherlight. And I'll uh, scry before drawing this time. Alright, bottom this. Bottom that. Draw. Another Jura. So now I'll offer the trade for the Aetherborn with Jura since we drew another one. They could Doomfall and uh, get rid of Jura, but then we have a braid for the other one. We can start hitting with the Weather Lights, so I think that's fine. Alright, say go. Alright, Doomfall is gonna take our Jura. Aetherborn gets in. And this is where we start leveraging our mana advantage. Alright, let's uh, sag the Renegade map before we start scrying anymore. So let's crew Weatherlight. Get in for five. Ooh, those are some good ones. I'll take a Traxos. Then destroy the Aetherborn. I'm gonna hope our opponent doesn't have a Bontus Last Reckoning here. Not gonna play around it, don't have the time to. Scram with the assistance. Keep Jora. It does take some time to resolve all these cries in our deck, so... We're getting a bit low on time, so I'll try to play as quickly as possible here. We get to untap Traxos with the Servants. Alright, say go. And hope for the best. Alright, opponent concedes, so we managed to beat a mono black here, outvaluing them with our various card draw engines. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, can't keep a no lander, and alright, I'll keep this. And Zelfern Void is interesting. We do need some more lands, I think I'll keep it. And then uh, we'll look for a red source so we can cast Jura in time. So let's lead with the Void. See what we can find. Treasure map, I'll also take. Gives us even more card selection and combines nicely with Voltaic Servant. Turn to Walking Ballista for one. Don't really care about that too much. So I think we... let's see. If we play Treasure map, next turn we can go Voltaic Servant, only use Treasure map once. If we play Voltaic Servant now, then we still only get to use Treasure map once, but we get to use it anyways, and this blocks the Walking Ballista. So sure, I'll run out the Voltaic Servant. I guess the argument for playing treasure map is that we can scry on upkeep in case we maybe find something like a spire bluff canal which would still enter the battlefield untapped this turn but preventing one damage is also not irrelevant. Alright, ranging raptors. They could uh, shoot it with their own walking ballista if they wanted to. So it could be some sort of rampy dinosaur deck. Alright, we'll uh, play treasure map and then scry. We could scry right now but we don't have any spare mana, so might as well wait. And if we can find uh, our fourth land, then this Traxos looks pretty appealing with the Voltaic Servant. I'll take two from the Raptor, don't want to give my opponent a free land. I'll take two. I think that's a worthwhile trade. And a Ribjaw Raptor, alright. Let's try and find that land. Alright, there's a Mountain, perfect, keep it on top. I'll also put a stop on uh, upkeep just in case we need to scry an upkeep in the future. So we could just play out Joyra, which is pretty tempting, or we can just play a Traxos, which blocks all the opponent's creatures. I think that's probably our best bet. Don't want to take 6 damage or more if our opponent just slams something like a Registrar Alpha. I think we want to have the Traxos in play and untap it with Voltaic Servant, of course. Alright, so we've got a 7-7 Trample in play. Let's see if our opponent has something like an Abrade to deal with it. Don't think we'll be scrying on upkeep since we just want to play Jora. Opponent does not attack, that bodes well for us. So we could actually attack with Traxos since we have another one. 
just trade it for a Ripjaw Raptor. It's not great since your opponent just gets to double block Ranging Raptor and Ripjaw Raptor. We could just deal all 7 damage to the Ripjaw Raptor, so it's not like they get to trigger and range on the Ranging Raptors, but it's trading Traxxas for a Ripjaw Raptor and giving them a card doesn't sound great. So I think we just uh, play Joyra and then scry with the treasure map, end of turn. And then if we can get to 6 mana for Karn's Temporal Sundering, we'll be in great shape. Since we get to bounce one of the opponent's creatures and maybe get in with Traxos multiple times. And they're gonna pump Walking Ballista, that's fine. They could pump it again in their turn, take out Joyra or Voltaic Servant, but that's fine. Instead they're just gonna shoot their own Ripjar Raptors to ramp. Makes sense. So they're looking to maybe slam a Carnage Tyrant here. Carnage Tyrant would be annoying since we can't bounce it with the Temporal Sundering, but it does still trade for Traxos. Oof, a Braid instead, that's uh, annoying. Makes our Temporal Sundering plan a lot worse. And a fight with Fire on Joyra, that's painful. So now we have nothing left. So I guess I'll take 6 once again. Scry with Treasure Map. And Mountain, probably don't need that at this point. And upkeep, I'll scry again. And bottom the Sulphur Falls. So I'll just play another Traxos. And say go. Alright, let's hope our opponent's out of uh, Abrades. Definitely one of the drawbacks of playing Traxos with all the Abrades that are being played right now. And grow from the Ashes without Kicker. So opponent maybe wants to pump up the Walking Ballista here. Nope, Rekindling Phoenix to play. Alright. Does mean we will get to Karn's Temporal Sundering on our next turn, which is going to be pretty good. So let's draw. Magma Spray could also do some work. If we Temporal Sundering the Ripjaw Raptor, attack with Traxos, then we could still Magma Spray the Rekindling Phoenix if they block with it to make sure that it dies and stays exiled. So I don't mind that. So we will take an extra turn. We'll bounce the Ripjaw Raptor. I guess it's a little bit suspicious if we tap the Treasure Cove, but I also don't want to waste the treasure, so I'll tap it anyways. And this is also a historic spell, so also untap Straxos for whatever that's worth. Get in there for 7. And I suspect our opponent's gonna block with the Phoenix, but they might uh, sniff out this Magma Spray. Alright, opponent just takes it. We'll untap, untap Traxos. Draw with the Treasure Cove and just some lands. Right, let's get in there with Traxos. So we did miss out on one potential Treasure Cove activation by keeping up that red mana for Magma Spray, but it was probably still worth it. Opponent takes it once again, play tapped Sparrow Bluff and say go. Alright, so didn't get to convert our Magma Spray yet, but we could always target the Walking Ballista if we want to. Opponent meanwhile down to 6 and... We still have two treasure tokens to draw extra cards with. Could have used Magma Spray on the Walking Ballista before the Raptor enters the battlefield so that we could uh, prevent them from drawing a card by pinging the Raptor. But I think we still want to hang on to the Magma Spray. Ooh, a Braid is a nice one too. Let's draw with the Treasure Cove first. Artificer's Assistant, not the best right now. I don't mind attacking with Traxos now that we have a Braid and Magma Spray, and our opponent will have to block, otherwise they uh, would take lethal. So let's see which creatures they throw in front. Alright, they just have an Abrade anyways. Fair enough. So now we're in trouble. Play Assistance. Don't think there's a point playing the land. We can maybe loot it away with an Azor's Gateway at some point. Alright, so we could block Assistant on Phoenix and then Magma Spray. That seems reasonable. And then hold the braid for Walking Ballista. And at this point I don't mind giving the opponent an extra land. If your opponent suspects the Magma Spray, they could uh, shoot down the Artificer's Assistant here. But I'm just gonna abrade the Walking Ballista right now. Let's see if they go to the face or kill the Assistant here if they suspect a Magma Spray. 
All right, they ping the servant instead. Makes sense from their perspective. So now the servant will die, but we will get to exile the phoenix. So I want to make sure to let damage happen first to ensure that uh, phoenix has one damage on it. And then we can magma spray. If they have another braid type card, they could point it at their own phoenix so it doesn't get exiled, but they did not. All right, so we are at eight facing six power, so not the best spot, but we do have some outs. Weatherlight needs a crewmate. And there we go. All right, let's uh, play Joyra. And then play the Weatherlight. Draw a card. It's pretty flavorful. All right, say go. And here we could crew the Weatherlight, block Ribjaw Raptor. Opponent does get to draw a card in the process. And if they have something like a Lightning Strike or a Magma Spray, they could finish off the Weather Light. Taking four seems kind of bad. I guess Walking Ballista for one, two, three, four could kill us. So that's the reason to block the Ribjar Raptor if they have Walking Ballista specifically. Even if they have Walking Ballista and we block with the Weather Light, they get to finish off Weather Light, kill Joyra, so we're not winning that game either. So I think we just take four in the hopes that they just have a Magma Spray that they were trying to convert, or they were just trying to draw a card with the Ripture Raptor. Since if we get to attack with the Weatherlight, we have a pretty high chance of drawing our way out of this. All right, instead it's a Multani. Yep, that was going to kill us too. 8-8, eight, eight. and yep, just a land to draw. All right, we're dead. Looked very good for a second there, but then uh, Multani happens. Alright, so don't have a ton of cards for this matchup, necessarily. Opponent's just ramping. We could bring in Spyglass to name Walking Ballista, but I don't think Walking Ballista is necessarily a big problem for us. I guess Fight with Fire is a little bit better than Magma Spray in this matchup. And didn't see any giant red creatures that we can kill with Chandra's defeat. I guess her opponent could just have Chandra herself. And Magma Spray does have some utility against the Phoenix. I think we keep it in and then uh, run it back. Hope our opponent doesn't draw as many abrades as they did. I would like to be on the plate. And this hand looks okay. Turn to Gateway. I've got an abrade to interact. And then we're just looking to find some legendary creatures to enable Weather Light and the Temporal Sundering. Thomanic Compass we can kill with a braid. Let's draw first. All right, full take servants. Interesting with the gateway here. So I think we want to activate the gateway first. See what we draw. All right, Zahid, that's a plan for next turn. And Zahid also combines nicely with Karn's Temporal Sundering. So I think we just get rid of the full take servant, even though it's a combo with the gateway. Just because we probably just want to play the Renegade map here to ensure that we have land number four for next turn. And I'm sure opponent gets the compass for a turn, but that probably doesn't matter too much. Arranging raptors, that's fine. All right, let's sacrifice the renegade map. Get a land and then play Zahid for four mana. And they can't abrade that one. And then if we can just get to six mana for temporal sundering, we should be able to close out the game. Opponent gets a mountain, does not attack with the raptors. All right, renegade maps, not a bad one. So we could play the weather light, but I think we just want to get to six mana as uh, quickly as possible. So that means playing the renegade map and using gateway to draw a card. And yep, I think we just get rid of the weather light here. Kind of go all in on Sahid, since if that plan doesn't work, we're in trouble anyways. And then. Play Renegade map, attack for five, and we could abrade the compass, but I think I'll hang on to the abrade for now. And yeah, I don't think our opponent can survive double temporal sundering here, they just take 15. So hopefully they can't deal with Zahid here. Alright, they're using the compass. Don't think there's a card for two mana that gets them out of this. They would need something like a plummet, specifically, but they got a mountain. All right, should be in the clear here. Untap, draw, 
Sack Renegade map, get a land, play Temporal Sundering, targeting us, bouncing the compass, I guess. Attack for five, attack for five again, play another Temporal Sundering, and attack for five one last time. I'll just play the Temporal Sundering, so opponent can maybe concede to save some time. Alright, on to game three against Red-Green. Don't think we change anything. Zahid worked out pretty well there, dodging, potential a braid. Definitely better than Traxos in this matchup. And this hand looks okay. We've got our Pia into Joyra with the Temporal Sundering. And these Zelfirn Voids to help us uh, get some early interaction, maybe. Let's uh, play one. Voltaic Servant's an interesting one. Probably don't need it here. Alright, turn to Walking Ballista. And we drew a Voltaic Servant anyways. Alright, I guess we'll play it here. We could go Zilfirin Void into Voltaic Servant and then go Mountain Pia, Sulphur Falls, Joyra. That actually seems fine. And Island's an interesting one since we do need double blue for the Temporal Sundering, but I think we already have plenty of lands, so we just need to find some more action. So I'll bottom it. I'm sure we can find another blue source before turn 6. Alright, grow from the ashes, bonus ramping. Picked up a Spar Bluff, which we might as well play here. And I will attack with the Voltaic Servant now. Could also wait and play Joyra before playing Pia, but if they have a removal spell for Joyra, then it doesn't really matter. Would rather just play on curve, since we have a pretty high number of 4 drops in the deck. Don't want to be stuck uh, with too many expensive cards in hand. Kick to grow from the ashes, that's scary, since now this walking ballista represents a ton of damage in the future. And a thematic compass, which is going to transform right away. Drew the Abrade right on time. We could just Abrade the Walking Ballista right now, and then play Jora a turn later. That's probably okay. So that means that this turn we can also pump with Pia. So let's attack with uh, everyone. Doubt our opponent's gonna chum block with the Walking Ballista. Let's pump the Voltaic Servant. I guess we should have waited until block since this was still before blockers, but... Again, I doubt our opponent's gonna chum block with the Walking Ballista. So they'll end up taking three. And then we could wait to kill the Walking Ballista, but then they might be able to have something like a Blossoming Defense or just bump the Walking Ballista twice and then shoot down our PI instead. So I think we just wanna destroy the Ballista right now. Opponent's gonna shoot down our Thopter token and that's fine. Voltaic Servant will untap itself, and hopefully your opponent doesn't have any big uh, payoff card here. Alright, Ripture Raptor, that's still reasonable, and only one card left. So don't mind this position, just need to find some historic spells to draw cards with Joyra. A Braid doesn't do a ton here. Would have been nice to play Joyra and historic spell in the same turn, but I think we just have to play Joyra here, and then next turn we can Temporal Sundering, which is also... Historic, since it's legendary, so also draws us a card. And then uh, no attacks for this turn. Hope they don't have a removal spell as their last card. Fight with fire would be especially painful. Alright, it's a harness lightning. It's also pretty bad for us. But at least it's not a fight with fire. So now I would say we're pretty even. But our opponent might have some better top decks, given that they have a ton of lands in play. We'll take four. So we could Temporal Sundering now that we still have P.I. in play. It's probably fine. Take an extra turn, bounce Ripjaw. Could have played the treasure map first and then tried to get that going. But we can still play it and activate it twice, thanks to the Voltaic Servant next turn. Opponent can use their Spires on P.I. 
Instead, they're going to save it for next turn, which is smart, since we might be able to pump the Servant a bunch of times otherwise. Draw Azor's Gateway. All right, so we've got a ton of uh, card selection going on here. So I think we just attack with both, see what our opponent does, and then uh, play our two artifacts. I imagine they'll just use the Spires here. That's fine, since we want to spare mana to activate our artifacts instead of pumping the Voltaic Servant. So let's play a treasure map. Let's play a gateway. Scry with treasure map. Bottom the renegade map. And I think we want to scry again with the treasure map instead of using the gateway here. Just because we want to transform that as soon as possible to draw extra cards. Put on three place Ripjaw. Use treasure map end of turn and we can use it again on upkeep. And I'll take another Temporal Sundering. Cast Temporal Sundering, take an extra turn, bounce Ripjaw. I'm sure this is getting old for the opponent. Get that incremental value. Opponent down to 9. Untap. And now on upkeep I'll transform Treasure Map. Bottomed Islands. Take a draw step. And then we can loot this away. With the gateway. Ooh, Traxos is a nice one. So let's attack. Alright, don't mind our spot here. Those temporal sunderings did quite a number on our opponent. Let's see if they can get out of this. Spires is a nice answer to Traxos, so it's not like we added a ton of power to the board, but it is still a 7 7 blocker for the Ripjaw Raptor. All right, let's uh, draw. Sack a treasure. So we could go for lethal here, I think, if we prevent Ribja Raptor from blocking with Pia and then pump our Voltaic Servants a bunch of times. But I think it's probably fine if we played a little slower. So I'm just gonna use a gateway, get rid of land, go to combat, Attack with Traxos, make him use the Spires. I guess I'll play the land, say go. Get to use the Arch once again. Alright, Glorybringer is pretty good here. Can't kill it with a Braid. I guess I should use the Gateway in case we top deck into another Burn spell to kill the Glorybringer. Alright, found a Weatherlight instead, that's also pretty good. So, yeah, opponent gets to attack us. And they're probably going to kill Pia here. Nope, they go for the Voltaic Servants. I guess it also makes sense. So, could sacrifice it with Pia, doesn't really do much. So, sure. Alright, let's draw. Art of Sister's Assistance. I think we start by drawing with Treasure Cove. Zelfer and Void. Let's use the gateway. Renegade map can probably go here. And then... So let's start by attacking with Traxos. Again, make them use the Spires of Raska. Could be a waste of time, but you never know. Opponent could have a card they want to play for 6 mana, and by attacking with Traxos, they can't. And then I'll play Assistance. Play Weatherlight. Scry with the assistance. Another weather light, probably not necessary. And probably don't need another servant, although it is an artifact to pump with Pia and it does help us screw the weather light. So sure, I'll keep it on top. Say go. Alright, there's Multani. Maybe not going for lethal that one turn punished us, but we'll see here if we can find a win. Can play Voltaic Servants and then in response crew the Weatherlight with Traxos. Jora is good. We can prevent both these creatures from blocking by using Pia. Pay one, sacrifice the treasure as our artifact, and then we can do it again on Multani. Pay one. 
sacrifice the gateway. And now we have multiple lethal attackers. All right, we got there, so maybe we should have gone for lethal a turn or two earlier, but uh, in the end, our card advantage got us there. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and this hand looks okay. Bit land heavy given the Renegade map, perhaps, but still uh, keepable. All right, let's see here. Voltaic Servants, not bad. Let's lead with Renegade map, say go. Turn one planes, not sure what that means. Could be blue white control, could be some white aggro deck. Alright, turn two Famished Paladin. Good thing we have the Sabraid. Yeah, I don't think I want to mess around with the Famished Paladin here. I'm just gonna braid it right now before they get a chance to perhaps uh, put some enchantments on it. Since if we tap out for Servant and they put the lifelink enchantment on the Paladin and give it plus one plus one, then we're kind of in trouble. So yeah, let's just get this out of here. We'll know more after the first game whether or not we should do this in the second game as well, or if we can afford to wait. And then to Vanguard, that one's more difficult to answer, and a Dauntless Bodyguard protecting the Vanguard. Um, I guess we might as well sag the Renegade map, it's not doing much for us in play. Get a land, thin out the deck a little bit. Alright, another Magma Spray is not bad actually. Play Voltaic Servants. And then Magma Spray, the Bodyguard. I guess we can also just block the Bodyguard with the Voltaic Servant, so we don't have to act quite yet. But uh, we'll see here what our opponent does. If they play Banalish Marshal, then we have the Magma Spray for the Bodyguard. Probably will take some damage from the Vanguard, though. All right, both get in there, so they might have a trick, which is going to work out pretty well for us. Yep. Let's see if they have a second trick. They don't, so we got a nice 2 for 1 there. Take 3 from Vanguard down to 17. Alright, we get to untap. And yeah, I think we just play Joyra. We don't have a 1 mana artifact, so it doesn't really pay off to wait a turn. And waiting 2 turns seems a bit much. Bottom the island. Play Joyra. All right, let's see what opponent has. Vanguard gets in there, we'll take it. So we did see Moment of Triumph, which also gains life, which could have untapped the Famished Paladin. Haven't seen any other life gain so far, but I imagine there's gonna be some more cards in their deck. Play Azor's Gateway, draw a card with Joyra. All right, another Voltaic Servant's not bad, actually. So don't mind playing one more land, at least. Play Servant's. And then we can still loot away a land with the Azor's Gateway. And given that we only have one mana up, there's no need to use a Gateway in our turn. We can just wait and keep up Magma Spray as well. And that's going to give us a little bit more information on what to potentially exile with the Gateway. Opponent takes four, down to 15. And we'll untap the Servant twice, I guess. Does our opponent have any play end of turn? cast out. All right. They did wait and let us draw two cards with Joyra, which may have been a mistake. And they're going to target the gateway now, which I'll use and get rid of a land. They probably didn't respect uh, Joyra enough. Dauntless Bodyguard doesn't do much. And another one. So yeah, these uh, Voltaic Servants match up pretty well against the Bodyguards. We'll take three from the Vanguard. So the second bodyguard is protecting the first one. Have to keep that in mind. All right, treasure maps, excellent. And Zahid's great as well. So I think we attack with the one Voltaic Servant and Joyra. That works. And then we can play Zahid, tapping the untapped Voltaic Servants. Draw a card. Probably should have done this before attacking in case they have a seal away on Joyra, for example. And then the two Voltaic Servants will untap, giving us two additional blockers. So this game went pretty well for us, and still have the treasure map with double Voltaic Servant, which is also kind of a combo. Get to transform it in one turn, so your opponent will need another cast out here. Alright, they found it. Gets rid of Zahid, but in the meantime, 
We get the card advantage going with Joyra, so still don't mind our spot. Take three. At some point we can throw the Voltaic Servants in front, but I don't think we want to do that yet. So upkeep we can scry. I don't think we need another spot removal spell. I would rather find a historic card. I think we can a Magma Spray, the first bodyguard, or the second rather, that is not getting protected by anything. And then we can attack with Joyra. I'll play land, say go. And then we want to untap treasure map. Tap it. Scry. Bottom the mountain. And then untap it again. Might as well transform it right away. Another Joyra. I'll bottom it. Maybe should have waited with the last activation in case they find a removal spell for Joyra, then we would want the second Joyra. But I think we'll be fine. Sacred Cat, yep, yeah, that's fine. So now I think I'm okay blocking with a Voltaic Servant just to preserve our life total. They could sacrifice a Bodyguard as well instead of paying 4 life, but that's okay. Alright, they're gonna pay the 4 life, that's fine. Could have abraded in response, but I don't think that would have been great for us. And we could abrade the bodyguard now. I think we wait and untap. We have plenty of mana to work with. Let's uh, draw with the treasure cove. All right, been flooding out a little bit here. If we attack with Jura, opponent can double block. I think we just want to abrade the bodyguard now then. And if they have a plus two plus two trick, that's not good enough. So they sack bodyguard, sure. Vanguard's indestructible. Attack for four. And our opponent's gonna have to chum block if they don't have anything. Alright, looks like they did have the trick. So it's just a trade. But we did end up losing Joyra, which is pretty important here, so... We're still okay, since we're drawing two cards a turn and our opponent's empty-handed, but... Could definitely still lose this one. Opponent gets back Sacred Cats. Gets in there with the Vanguard. I think I'll take three. Draw. Not our Servants. Draw with the Treasure Cove. Alright, there we go. So let's attack with the Voltaic Servant. I guess we can play Pia first, since she can pump the Servant as well. Can't quite attack for lethal, since we can prevent the token from blocking, but we can't pump the Servant enough. So we'll just attack... And we might pump it once or twice. Pump it once. And pump it twice. And then play another Servant. Should be able to close out the game next turn. Unless something strange happens. Sorcerer's Wand. That's uh, an interesting finisher. They can deal two to us. I guess they also gain a life here, which is pretty sweet. But yeah, we should be able to close out the game here. Draw, not gonna do anything but just attack. And our opponent scoops it up. All right, up against Mono White Aggro. What do we wanna bring in? Two additional Magma Spray seem great against the Sacred Cats as well, exiling them. Don't think we want anything else. And what do we take out? Could see maybe shaving one assistant and going down on a temporal sundering, which might be a bit slow. All right, this hand seems pretty great. We've got lots of interaction, some lands, some selection with the scry and the gateway. All right, there's a sorceress wand again. It does combine nicely with uh, lifelink creatures, but we haven't seen a ton of wizards out of the mono white deck. I think we just play Spire Bluff, say go, keep up uh, Magma Spray, try and catch their 2-drop. Alright, it's a Vanguard. Yeah, don't have a ton of great answers to the Edento Vanguard. Can just uh, exchange Magma Spray for 4 life, I guess. Might be okay, sure. Alright, so turn 2, play the Void. Wouldn't mind an extra land. Don't think Magma Spray is necessary given the Vanguard, so I'll bottom it. And then we can play either Gateway or Treasure Map. Probably the Treasure Map. Try and get it transformed as quickly as possible. 
can scry on upkeep since we don't have a three mana play lined up. And then maybe play a braid next turn as well. Alright. Triumph of Gerard. Yeah, that's a pretty good one in combination with the Vanguard. So your opponent's kind of all in on their one creature. And bodyguard to protect it. Yeah, we don't have any cheap bounce spells. We can bounce the Vanguard eventually with the Sundering, but that's gonna take a while. So upkeep scry. Zahid is not bad. Do still need an extra land, but it is a blocker for the Vanguard. So I think we have to keep that one on top. And then we'll play the gateway. Or I guess we can just abrade the bodyguard, which might be okay as well. Sure. Just get rid of an attacker. Don't think we need to kill the Sorcerer's Wand at this point. Alright, so our plan will be to hope to find a fourth land, play Zahid as a blocker. Another triumph. Well, now the Vanguard will be big enough to attack past Zahid. So now our plan might have changed. So next turn, their creature will get Flying First Strike, Lifelink on the end of turn. So it's not going to be possible to really outrace them. Yeah, if the Zahid plan no longer works, then we just need to transform Treasure Map and then cast the Karn's Temporal Sundering. But we also need to find a legendary creature to put in play. So that's going to be tricky. I think we just need to scry with the Treasure Map here. Or we can get lucky, find a land, but then we can't transform Treasure Map in time, so we won't be able to cast the Temporal Sundering. Don't know if we have any outs. I'll scry an upkeep. Voltaic Servants, that's a way for us to untap the treasure map, but does that do anything? I don't think so, so I need to bottom that. Draw. Sky Sovereign also doesn't do it. Let's play Gateway. Say go. Yeah, we would have been able to eventually bounce the Vanguard, but the fact that it's going to gain flying two turns in a row means we can't shun block it on the ground, so Voltaic Servant wasn't useful. So they get to attack us for seven, and next turn for lethal. Might be able to chum block a turn with uh, Zahid, I guess. But then we need to still be able to deploy a legendary and play the Temporal Sundering in the same turn. So that's going to be pretty rough. And a Fragmentize on the treasure map. That's also pretty effective. Alright, I guess we're dead. So I guess for now we're only out is playing Zahid. Tapping the gateway, chump for a turn. I guess our opponent will have to pay for life, but they also gain... 7, so they probably don't mind. Yeah, I'm not sure how we beat the Vanguard with all those counters on it, if your opponent's not under any pressure. Alright. Opponent up to 26. I guess now we can chum block for a turn with Joyra as well, but that's also not a winning strategy. And the Wand can also just finish us off in a couple of turns. Magma Spray looks pretty bad. Activate the gateway here. Yeah, it doesn't do it. So we can use both removal spells, but our opponent can just pay for life. So I guess the hope is that they forget to do so. Alright, they're gonna do it right away. Alright, that's game. Alright, on to game 3 against Mono White. Do we want to reconsider anything? I guess... We can actually bring in Sorcerer Spyglass and name Adanto Vanguard. That might be somewhat reasonable as a plan, since we don't have any other great answers otherwise. I kind of like the Temporal Sundering plan against an opponent going all in on the Vanguard. Gateway can be a little slow. Maybe one Spyglass is enough though. Would like to be on the play. Alright, there's a hand with Spyglass, but it looks pretty bad. Not because of Spyglass necessarily, but just because we have six lands essentially. So that's not a keep. Uh, this one I'll keep. And another Void. I guess we can keep that since uh, with the Weatherlight and Pia we could use an extra land. And it's a pretty good one to draw as well. So turn one we won't be playing the Void since we know what's on top. So we can just go Island Renegade map. Would be unfortunate if they just fragmentize the Renegade map right away. But I guess that's better than using it on the Weatherlight. Alright, let's uh, sack Renegade map right away. Get a mountain. But I guess we already have a play lined up for next turn, so we might as well play the mountain for now. And then play the void next turn. Makes sense. Is it turn 2 Vanguard? Nope. 
All right, that's good. All right, I guess we play the Spire Bluff. Since we already have a play lined up for next turn with the Weatherlight, and it could be relevant that this enters Battlefield untapped now and tapped later. So play Pia, say go, and then hope they don't have a Fragmentize for Weatherlight. Famished Paladin, that's fine. And a charge. Oof, I think that's a misclick. I don't think our opponent meant to play that. Yeah, that's a little awkward. All right, another Spire Bluff. All right, let's uh, play the Void. Bottom, another Spire Bluff. Play Weatherlight. I think I'm okay giving the opponent a window to potentially put a counter on the Paladin. Could attack for one with a Thopter. I think I would rather keep the Weatherlight back on defense. So I'll say go. Another Famished Paladin. And a Dauntless Bodyguard protecting the first Famished Paladin gets in there. So they must have the plus two plus two trick. Otherwise, this doesn't make any sense. So I'll take it. And the plus two plus two trick can also let them untap the Paladin. So that's good to know. All right, Magma Spray is not bad. So we only have double red, so we can't use Pia twice on the Thopter to crew Weatherlight and still keep up a Magma Spray. So we could just crew the Weatherlight and attack for four with the Weatherlight. That's probably still okay. And then keep up our removal spells. Let's see what we can find. All right, Zahid's pretty good. Can't play it this turn, but next turn it's going to be pretty good. So for now, I think we just play a Spire Bluff tapped. And then next turn, we can also just hard cast Sahid for six mana. So I didn't want to use any removal spell end of turn there, since if our opponent does have the trick, they would get to untap their Famished Paladin. Triumph of Gerard happens. So this is going to target one of their Paladins. And then in response, we can abrade. And if they have the trick we get to Magma Spray. So yeah, this works. They get to untap the Paladin, and then we Magma Spray as well. Hope they don't have another trick. If they still had the charge, we could have been in a bit of trouble here. All right, so they will get to attack us with the first Paladin and the Bodyguard, but next turn we'll have Zahid. So I think we're okay. And a Sacred Cat. All right, opponent's on empty. So let's draw. Not our Spire Bluff. Let's play Zelfern Void, since we want to play Zahid for six mana. Bottom another one. All right, so we can play Zahid, Crew Water Light with it, and attack in the air for a bunch. But I think we would rather have Zahid on defense. So I'm just going to Crew here. I guess I maybe should have attacked first before playing the Zelfer Void. All right, Karn's Temporal Sundering. I guess we can just play this. So we'll take an extra turn. We'll bounce the Famished Paladin. And Jora's pretty good here. Now that the 3-3 is gone, I feel better about just playing Jora to crew the Weatherlight and attacking with everyone. And find PNLR, play Spire Bluff, say go. So we could have activated Pia there to get in for an extra point, but let's say we were going to draw Voltaic Servant. That would have been a nice play. Opponent replays Famished Paladin, but now they're pretty far behind. They have to play defense. All on tap, draw. So let's see, can we kill our opponent here? And our opponent's just going to pack it in. So yeah, we could have just crewed the weather light and pumped the weather light on the thopter a bunch of times and attacked for lethal. All right, managed to beat mono white aggro. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.